Well, good morning, church. I greet everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. I am so glad to see each and every one of you here this day to worship the Lord. Uh, our hope and prayer, of course, is that it will be a glorious day. A little front came through last night and the humidity dropped, so it was uh, a glorious evening. And I hope you were able to get out and enjoy uh, God's, God's handiwork there. So, churches, I'm thinking about it because it totally slipped my mind <laughs> at both worship services last Sunday. If you would, take note of where that attendance pad is, please, and just mark that you are present this morning to worship the Lord. That would be greatly appreciated. If you are worshiping here for the very first time at Benton United Methodist Church, I want to say a very special welcome to you. Our prayer always is that you will be blessed and fed by the Holy Spirit this day. So praise be to God for that. Church, just a couple announcements that I wanted to bring to your attention. Firstly, speaking of God's handiwork, Bob McGowan uh, reminded me that uh, the muscadines out back are ready to be picked, so please go and uh, pick some. Here's what we ask, though, and this is of church members and also of the community. If you would, just uh, make a donation, a monetary donation that would be greatly appreciated, and you can just send that uh, to the church or drop that off at the front office. But what a, what a blessing that we have uh, with, with those muscadines. So they, they are ready. Also, there's going to be a fire recovery ministry meeting. Take note of this date, uh, church, Wednesday, October, excuse me, October, August, August 25th. Um, at 6 p.m. So Ra our own Rachel Stoneman uh, has more details about that, so you can reach out to her uh, regarding uh, that meeting. But uh, a wonderful ministry, just absolutely uh, a blessing for those who have done it and are doing it and, and will continue to do so. But we wanted to talk about, uh, about that ministry. So if you would, let, let me just reiterate that. Wednesday, uh, uh, <laughs> August, August, August 25th. Yeah, what is it about October? It's probably, and hopefully when the cooler weather comes, right? August 25th at 6 p.m. Okay, a couple of other things that I wanted to mention this morning. Church, very excited about this. Put this on your calendars. The Benton United Methodist Men's Annual Auction, we are going to move forward with that. Saturday, September 11th at 6 p.m. right here in the Family Life Center. That will be a blessing as it has always been. And we are uh, going to make those tickets available to you and to families very soon so you can go ahead and get those tickets now for uh, that, uh, that auction date and, uh, and experience. And it's going to be, just to let you know, uh, our fried fish dinner, $15 a person. But know this, church, all of the money that will be raised, collected that evening, will go right back into the community uh, in the name of Christ as we serve our Lord and Savior. So, very, very excited about that. So, that is all of the announcements. I would invite you just to look over them uh, as, uh, as you will this, uh, this day. We will begin worship uh, this morning with a blessing of music, and, and what a gift music is, church. What a gift we have with our choir, uh, with Hannah, with uh, the Gap Band. So we are indeed a blessed church. So Hannah now will uh, bless us with uh, a gift of music. Please enjoy.
What a blessing. What a blessing. And you know, the, the gift of music just invites the Holy Spirit in. It's a way that you and I can have our uh, spiritual cups filled. And what a, what a blessing. What a blessing we have in our music ministry this day. So church, our theme for this day, we're going to go back to the first Kings text and hear from Elisha and his conversation with the Lord this day. So very, very much looking forward uh, to preaching from that text this day. But firstly, let me open up with a word of prayer. So if you would, let us bow our heads and go unto the Lord God Almighty. O God, you come to us not in the chaos of the whirlwind, nor in the roar of the earthquake, not in the crackling heat of the fire, but in the sound of sheer silence. Quiet our minds, bring peace to our hearts and stillness to our bodies, that we might meet you in that silence. Help us to listen for your still small voice. Give us the courage to go wherever you lead us, trusting that you will prepare the way. And we pray this always in the name of our companion on the journey, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. Church, I'm going to ask if you would to please stand for our opening hymn of praise. Thank you. So church, uh, Fuzzy is always ready in, a, in moment's notice to uh, lead the choir and the congregation. So let's give uh, Fuzzy and the choir a big hand this day. God bless you folks. Great job. Great job. Just, just to let you know, Sandy is with Britt um, at, at least through this Sunday, I believe. Is she going to be back next Sunday? Is that... Is that what I understand, I believe? So ju just to let you know, but a big thank you to, to Fuzzy for, for leading us this day. Thank you, Fuzzy. So church, let's do something very important, you and I, and that is affirm what we believe. This should be something that is on our hearts and minds always, something that you and I stand upon. It is our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. If you would, please join me in this holy liturgy. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Church, you may be seated. And as you do, I'm going to ask the ushers if they will please come forward for this morning's offering. And church, as they make their way forward, I'd like to offer a word of prayer over us and over the offering that the Lord will receive. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God, we stand upon something mighty and powerful and eternal, and that is your grace, grace that has no strings attached. It's something, O oh God, that was given out of your pure love and righteousness. So, Lord, I pray that each and every one of us, Christians even around the world, can know that this day, that we can stand upon your grace, that as we stand, Lord, we also respond. We respond in faith. We respond, Lord, with great joy. Joy in knowing that you are working and moving and transforming and saving lives. Lord, what a blessing it is to be a part of the body of Christ that we can respond, Lord, with our gifts and with our hands and with our hearts to serve not ourselves, not the world, but the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is what we stand upon, His grace and His glory. Bless, Lord, this musical offering. Bless, Lord, this monetary offering. May it be done always in Your name and to Your glory. In Jesus we pray. Amen. of grace is Jesus my redeemer there is no more for heaven now to give he is my joy my righteousness and freedom my steadfast love my deep and boundless peace to this I By my side, the Savior, he will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, his power is displayed. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend me.
I tread, I know I am forgiven. The future's sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon. And he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold. Church, you may be seated. Okay, gang, we're doing something a little different this morning. So if you'll all return to your spots, I'm sorry. If I told Georgia that, she would just get up and gentry that, she'd get up and leave. She told me if I sent her back, sent her out, she'd just leave. So all right. So um we're going to present Bibles during this time today. Um, I'm going to call you, you don't, I thought about this, you don't have your full name called very often when you graduate, uh, when you get married, and I guess maybe some of you when you get in trouble, maybe your parents call you by your whole full name, but I'm going to, um, this is one of those important times when I think that your whole name should be said. So I'm going to say your entire name for you to come up. You're going to get your Bible, and then once you get your Bible, I want you to walk right over here, okay? So, Brightly, you're going to be first, so you'll come right over here to the edge of these other steps. We're going to stand in a line, and at the end, after everybody gets their Bible, Pastor Brad's going to say a prayer, okay? So, we're going to line up right here across the front, okay? I do want to show you all the Bibles. I think the Bibles are beautiful. Um, at first, I thought, oh, that's a boy Bible. But then this is actually represents the creation. And so I think that's an excellent, um, an excellent thing. So people are going to be taking your pictures, put your smiles on, your best behavior, and all of that stuff, okay? So we're going to begin with Briley Page 
Bagley. They get a Bible and a box to put their Bible in. Now you go stand by those other steps, okay? Elizabeth Claire Boyd. Ella Grace Boyd. Griffith Aiden Brantley. Cameron Lane Calk. Charlotte Avery Cipher. This one over here. Max William Doyle. Ty Cody Duke. I didn't see it, but okay. Lily Kate Ellis. Madison Elizabeth Franklin. Yes, sir. Sawyer Bradley Franklin. Austin Cole Guglielmo. I didn't want to mispronounce anybody's name. John Marshall Knighton.
Ivy Ray LeBlanc. Cohen Thomas Moore. Nora Francis Olandike. Dominique Leilani Paul. Is Dominique here yet? There she is. Nicholas David Randall. Peyton Emma Reeves. Okay, Briley, can I get you to, oh, well, there we go. That's a great idea, Peyton. Just go down to that end. Look at that. Smart girl. <laughs> Eva Elizabeth Salter. He's done. Okay. Parker James Seaton. Grayson James Wakefield. Levi Monroe Kelsch. Okay, what a great bunch. Look at that. Is that amazing? Oh, my word. So this bunch is a tad bit larger than we usually have because we have three grades because of COVID, but we usually do fourth graders. So if you're a fourth grader, would you step forward? Fourth, that's how many fourth graders we have. So uh, our, our, it would have been a large class regardless, but uh, it's an extra large class because we have a few thirds and a few fifths. So y'all can back up. Okay. Um, Miss Rachel and Mr. Michael and Mr. David are expecting you to bring those Bibles to Sunday school and you will be using them. And some of the fourth graders have already started uh, learning Bible verses, memorizing Bible verses. Okay, somebody looked at me really crazy in fourth grade Bible study when I told them, 
those Bibles are, you're supposed to highlight in those Bibles important things. If there are important things in there that mean something to you, you highlight that. That Bible, by the time you finish confirmation and get a new Bible, that Bible should be worn out. You need to use that every day. You need to mark in it. You need to make notes in it. That is your Bible. It has your name in it, and you're to use it all the time. Okay? It's not something that we put on a shelf and we look at, and it's pretty. It is your Bible, and you need to use it. Thumbs up? Excellent. We're going to bow our heads and have a prayer. Church kiddos, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, what a glorious moment this is, O oh God. The next generation being equipped with the Word of God. Lord, this is a historic moment. It's a glorious moment. It's a gift that comes from your very heart, O oh God. We stand upon the Word of God, and as our movement founder said, John Wesley, that in the Bible it has all means necessary that leads us to salvation. So we pray over these Bibles. We pray over these kiddos and their lives and their families and their schools and the maturing spiritually that they will do as they read, as they pray, and as they get to know you more. We pray, O oh God, that they are listening in and through your word as they read it. Bless them and bless these Bibles. May it be a gift that continues to give. And we ask this always in the powerful and holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We're proud of you, kiddos. Okay, after church, Everybody that got a Bible, stay for just a minute. We're going to get together and take a picture of everybody together. Also, if you'd like your picture made with Pastor Brad in your Bible, he will be available for photos as well. Okay? Thanks so much. Okay, now, the folks that go upstairs with me, come on. What a blessing, church. What a blessing. So, uh, we are going to receive another blessing, and it's in the form of a musical offering. So, church, enjoy this music from Hannah Potter.
What a gift. We needed that, Hannah. You have blessed us abundantly this day. So, church, I think it very important that you and I go to the Word of God this morning as we prepare our hearts and spirits for prayer. So, let us go to the 27th chapter of the book of Psalms, verse 8. There's a word for you and I there this day. If you would, please join me responsively in this holy liturgy. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Amen and amen and amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer, church. Reading from Scripture now. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind went against the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. O Lord, thank you, O God, for understanding us, for letting us be human, for not expecting us always to play the hero. We thank you, O God, for not letting us wander too far into the desert, of despair, for we have eaten your food in the desert, the manna, the bread of life, Jesus Christ himself, and we know because we have consumed it that you are God. And we ask this always in the name of the one who gives us salvation, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray who gave us a pattern for prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Let us now pray that prayer together. Church, please join me. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen and amen. Church, I am turning now to the book of 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, verses 11 through 21. This is part two about the great prophet Elisha and his journey, and also uh, finally concluding with a conversation that he has uh, with the Lord God Almighty. I'd like to pray over this text and over us, so let us go to the Lord once again. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray, Lord, over this your word. I pray, Lord, that we can always stand upon your word, that we can know your word, and that your word, O oh God, is all we need to know salvation, abundant life that is in you. It's about living your word as we go out into the world. Bless it and our lives now in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Beginning with verse 11 from 1 Kings chapter 19. Go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elisha stood there, the Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. When Elisha heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And a voice said, What are you doing here, Elisha? He replied again, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down their altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Then the Lord God told him, Go back the same way you came and travel to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive there, anoint Hazel to be the king of Aram. Then anoint Jehu, grandson of Nimshi, to be the king of Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Sheraphat, from the town of Abel Melahola to replace you as my prophet. Anyone who escapes from Hazel will be killed by Jehu, and those who escape Jehu will be killed by Elisha. Yet I will preserve 7,000 others in Israel who have never bowed down to Baal or kissed him. So Elisha went and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, plowing a field. There were 12 teams of oxen in the field, and Elisha was plowing with the 12th team. Elisha went over to him and threw his cloak across his shoulders and then went away. Elisha left the oxen standing there, ran after Elijah, and said to him, First, let me go and kiss my father and mother goodbye, and then I will go with you. Elisha replied, go on back, but think about what I've done to you. So Elisha returned to his oxen and slaughtered them. He used the wood from the plow to build a fire to roast their flesh. He passed around the meat to the townspeople, and they all ate. Then he went with Elijah as his assistant. Church, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. 
So, uh, church, a, a first has just uh, happened uh, to me and to my uh, left shoe, and, and you know, it, it might uh, have happened to you in the past. Anyways, uh, it's kind of embarrassing and kind of awkward, but literally the sole of my left shoe is coming undone from my shoe. So if you hear me flapping around or flopping around, pray for you, preacher, would you? Uh, thanks be to God for duct tape or, or Gorilla Glue. Thank you, Emily, for buying both because we're going to need it. So just pray that I can make it from point A right here uh, out to the car without falling down because I am very clumsy, by the way, okay? Would you do that for me, please? Thank you. I appreciate that. Anyways, this is, this is very embarrassing, and for those who want to take a look, that's, that's, ju that's just bad is what that is. But it happens, right? It, it happens. So I will work on that between now and next Sunday. So, uh, church, our theme, our theme last Sunday, okay, was simply this. God's got this. God's got this, okay? God's got this. And Elisha needed to know that. He needed to be reminded of that. He needs to live that very rhythm of faith, that God's got this. And here's why, because Elisha was in a moment where he was very vulnerable, you see. He was literally being threatened, and his life was being threatened. So he was on the run, literally. He was scared for his life, and, and he needed to know uh, that, that, that God was with him and that God's got this, uh, and he, he certainly was. So here it is, uh, right here, uh, the second Sunday, part two, and we're still with uh, Elisha, and, and he, of course, is having this dialogue uh, with God. So let me go ahead and give you part two okay, and its theme, okay, and I want you to know this, I want you to etch this in your brain, please, just write it on your heart, if you would, take a note of it, we're going to email this out as well, so I want you to have those notes, but it's simply, it's simply this, okay, you've got this because God's got you, okay, let me say that again, you, church, have got this thing called life because God's got you. So what I want to do is go to the Word of God and unpack it uh, two lines at a time. So please bear with me. There is a word for you and I here this day. Beginning with verse 11, go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elisha stood there, the Lord passed by and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. Did you hear that, church? Verse 13, when Elisha heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Let me stop there, okay? So one thing, okay, that I think we miss, okay, as church people is this, that God will only come to us in the big lights and the big show and the loud music with the horses and the ponies and the dog and pony show, that that is the only way in which God Almighty, Jesus Christ, can be revealed to us in the big splash and the big production, okay? And if you look at the Word of God, it shows us that, right? That, hey, Elisha thought that God is going to come in this huge, big, gigantic way in the earthquake, right? That's big. That's awesome. It can also be very dangerous, can it not? 
Or what about in this windstorm that is so powerful it can loosen and even break up rocks? Or hey, surely God would come in the fire, right? He has before in the book of Exodus. Why not now? But how did God come? Not in the big splash, not in the huge, gigantic, epic way, but the Word of God says right here that he came in a gentle whisper, in fact. So church, let me ask you something. If God is coming in a gentle whisper to you and I individually or to the body of Christ, here's a very simple question. Are we listening? Are we listening? Are we listening with our ears? Yes, of course. But are we listening with the ears of our heart? You see, that's key. That's vital. That is so very important. Are we listening, church? Are you listening? So key. Hold on to that. Let me pick up now with verse 14. Well, better yet, 13b. And a voice said, what are you doing here, Elisha? Here it is. This question is repeated from last week's test text. What are you doing here, Elijah? Here's the thing, church. God, of course, knows the answer to that question. God is not asking that question to Elijah because he doesn't know the answer, you see. God knows full well the answer to that question. He wants to make sure that Elisha is sure and confident of the answer, okay? And we'll get to that in just a moment. Picking up with verse 14, Elisha, okay, is posed the question. So in his natural human response, he's going to what? Respond, right? He's going to respond. But again, I want you to know this. The big idea, the main theme is what? Elisha, you've got this because I've got you. He's not quite there yet. His human response is this, verse 14. He replied again, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you. They've torn down your altars and killed every one of your prophets. I'm the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Look, that's a great answer. That's a good answer. That answer needed to be said and needed to be offered, but the answer that God wanted, that he posed in the form of the question, was for Elisha to know, you've got this, you see? You've got this because I've got you. He's going to understand it and fully know it as we move through the scriptures, so let's go. Verse 14 here. Then the Lord told him, and these are details, you see. These are details that Elijah needed to know. He's on a mission now, verse 15. Then the Lord told him, go back the same way you came and travel to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive there, anoint this king, Hazel, to be the king of Aram. Then anoint Jehu, grandson of Nimshi, to be the king of Israel. And then anoint Elisha, the prophet who will follow you, son of Shaphat from the town of Abel Melahol, to replace you as prophet. Anyone who escapes from Hazel will be killed by Jehu, and those who escape Jehu will be killed by Elisha. Yet I will preserve how many? 7,000 others in Israel who have never bowed down to Baal or kissed him. And then verse 19, so Elisha went and found Elijah, son of Shaphat, plowing a field. So the Lord is giving him a mission, giving him a mission statement, go and fulfill it. Go and fulfill it. 
But know, you see, know that you've got this because I've got you. And church, I want you to hear this, okay? I want you to hear this very affirmation of faith. You've got this, church. You've got this thing called life because God's got you. But here's the test, you see, and this is a hard truth that you and I need to hear and need to be reminded of each and every day. You know, we can say with our lips, hey, Lord, you've got this. Hey, Lord, I've got this because you've got me. We can say that with our lips, but it's only when a crisis happens, right? Something that literally shakes us to our core, something like a storm that batters us back and forth, left and right, up and down, where the test comes, you see, where the test comes. We've got a choice in that moment, you see, when the storms in life come, in the home, at work, with another individual, in the church, somewhere in the kingdom, or on Main Street, it doesn't matter. When the crisis comes, church, are you going to throw up the white flag, throw in the white towel, and accept defeat? Are you going to be able to stand up on both feet and with bold courage and deep faith say, God, you've got this. I've got this, Lord, because you've got me. The crisis will come, and you and I will have the choice. Do we accept defeat or do we see victory beyond the storm? Here's a way in which you and I, every one of us, church, it doesn't matter who you are or where you have come from, that can always bring us to that place of faith and trust rather than doubt and defeat. And it's simply this, to be spiritually in tuned with the Lord God Almighty, to be alert spiritually to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And a way in which you and I can do that is to always have a spiritual sharpness about us that never grows dull, you see. A spiritual sharpness that never grows grows dull. Let me explain myself. Our movement founder of the Methodist Church, a man by the name of John Wesley, was so serious about his faith and always wanted to keep his spiritual senses sharp, he told both lay and clergy, and he used, by the way, both men and women in the ministry, he told them these folks that came out of these Wesleyan societies, he told them this, either you keep yourself sharp or you get out of ministry. Did you hear that? Keep yourself sharp spiritually or get out. Now, he held himself accountable to the very things that he held others accountable to as well. So much so, keep in mind, John Wesley was in the 18th century. So the travel, means of travel during that time, was by all intents and purposes horseback. So as he would go from parish to parish, preaching and teaching the Word of God, he would literally have the Word of God propped up in the saddle reading it as he was traveling, day by day by day by day, having a sharpened spiritual self, you see, is key, church. I think about it in this way. There's a story about a young man who wanted work. He was a hard worker. He had great work ethic, he decided to go and work for a timber company. 
he goes to the boss and he says, sir, I'm strong and I'm able body and I want to begin work today. So the boss says, here you go, young man. Here's an ax. Get to work. So the very first day, this young man fells 18 trees single-handedly. The next day, he gets right back to work because the boss patted him on the back and said, good job, young man. So the second day, the young man went right back into it, giving it his all. But that day, the second day, he was only able to fell 15 trees. The third day, feeling down and out, but still ready to work, He gives it his all, but he's only able to fell 10 trees. So he goes to the boss, frustrated and upset, literally in tears. And he said, boss, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm giving it my all, sir. You know what the boss said? Son, when's the last time, listen to this, when's the last time you've sharpened your axe? Did you hear that? When was the last time you've sharpened your axe? Having a sharpened spiritual self, church, is so very important. Abraham Lincoln said it this way. If you want me to cut down a tree, I'm going to spend eight hours doing it. But out of those eight hours, I'm going to spend four of those sharpening my axe, he says. What a great illustration for how that so applies to the spiritual life. Because church, here's another hard truth. In the day and time that we live in, we are spread thin. Are we not? We are spread so very thin because we have so many things that are competing, you see, for our attention. People, agendas, and lots of noise. And if we're not careful, church, we can get spread so thin that our spiritual self is not in fact strengthened, it's dulled, you see. And if you have a dull spiritual self, how can you be spiritual or godly or Jesus for anyone else? Whether it be family or friends or someone who is hurting on the street. That's why it is so important, church, to sharpen the axe. To keep the spiritual self sharp and aware and alert. So let me bring you to three scriptures and then we'll close. Three scriptures that point right to the Acts, but when you see the word Acts, I want you to just fill in the word spiritual self, okay? From from Ecclesiastes 10.10, it says this, using a dull axe, right, requires great strength, so sharpen the blade then. That's the value of wisdom. It helps you what? Not to fail, but to succeed and to always give God the glory. Why, church? Because you've got this, you see, because God has got you. 1 Samuel 13, 20, listen to this. So whenever the Israelites needed to sharpen their plowshares, their picks, their axes, or sickles, they had to take them to a Philistine blacksmith. You see, it's beyond their control. It's beyond what they could do themselves. So where do we get the strength? Where do we get the clarity? Where do we get the spiritual sharpness? From the Word of God, from God Himself, through the power of prayer. And please don't ever be ashamed to ask somebody else to pray for you. That's what the church is all about. That's what believers should be doing every day. Here's the last one. I love this one. 
Make sure you write this one down. Make sure you have this one in front of you always. This so applies to life. Here it is, Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharp sharpens iron, so a friend. What? Sharpens a friend. A friend is always meant to uplift and encourage and be there for another friend when they are hurting, when they are in pain, when they need love in their lives. Amen. Now, let me end with this scripture and just, just to show, just to show you the progression of Elisha the prophet who needed encouragement, who needed strength, who needed clarity. Remember, he was literally running for his life and absolutely terrified and in a crisis like many of us have been as well. I'm going to pick up with verse 11 here. Here it is. It says this, God tells Elisha, go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord said to him. Now, here's the progression of where Elisha finally ended up, sharpening his spiritual senses. Verse 19, let me end with this. So Elisha went. Did you hear that? God asked him to go, and Elisha went. He went because he got his spiritual self sharpened. And because of that, he matured. Church, let us always be aware and alert and be sharp in the Word of God and through the power of prayer. Because remember, if we're not doing that, then we're dull. Have a sharpened spiritual self every day. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, Elisha, he's speaking to us. He's not a prophet who is old and who has nothing to say from centuries ago. Oh, no, no, no. Elisha is speaking to us today. You are speaking through that prophet. You are speaking through the Word of God this day to our heart, you see, that it's so vitally important to be sharp these days because we are spread so thin. And if we're not paying attention to our spiritual selves, we can easily become dulled. Because this world, Lord, it's divided, it's ugly, it's worldly, and the only way to separate ourselves from all of that and to connect with what matters the most is in you and through your word. So, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus now more than ever that we can stand upon your word and be sharpened by it. Bless and keep us always. Bless and keep our church. Bless and keep our community. Bless and keep our schools. Bless and keep our globe. And Lord, bless and keep the United States of America. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Church, in just a moment, we will sing our final hymn together. Before we do that, though, I just want, <clears throat> excuse me, I just want to put forth this invitation to you. If you feel led to come and to pray at the chancel rail, please do that. If there is a heavy burden on your heart, I want you to know that this is a safe place to come and to surrender that. Also, if you would like to join Benton United Methodist Church or profess your faith in Jesus Christ, come forward, please, and let's celebrate that moment with you as we sing together, Lord, I need you. Please stand.
Amen. Amen. Folks, let's give Hannah a huge hand. Wow. Hannah, thank you. What a blessing you are. Hey, and church, I, I want you to know I've got these boys right here on the front row, and they were very good. They were very attentive. Uh, one of them started tapping his watch, so I'm like, I better get on with it and in service. So God, you have been wonderful. You have been absolutely wonderful. God bless you. Church, let me offer a word of prayer for us, and we will, we will go forth this day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I am blessed to be pastoring such a wonderful congregation. I love them very much, oh God. I know that there is a lot in this world, Lord, that can so easily divide us, Lord, and lead us astray. That is why your word is important now more than ever. Lord, prayer, Lord, is important now more than ever. Worship is important now more than ever. So sharpen us, Lord, each and every day, Lord, as we go forth, Lord, to be Jesus Christ in our world. Guide us and direct us as we do so. In his name we pray. Amen.